Electrocardiogram, abbreviated as ECG or EKG, is a record of electrical activity shown by a graph that shows a pattern of waves during cardiac cycles. This graph shows normal ECG wave. The P wave represents atria systole. The atria will contract a few seconds after the P wave begins. QRS wave represents ventricular systole. And a split second after QRS wave begins, the ventricles contract. T wave represents ventricular diastole. The ventricles will relax a few seconds after the T wave is produced. A normal resting heart rate ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. From the ECG, the heart rate can be determined by examining the distance between the RR interval. So this normal ECG shows regular cardiac rhythm. When SA node initiates electrical impulse, the impulse spread to the wall of the atria, and that is represented by the P wave. After atria contracts, the impulse arrives at the AV node. The transmission of impulse at the AV node is delayed briefly, and then the impulse spreads to the AV bundle and then uh, into the AV bundle branches that, that transmit the impulse to the apex of the heart next to the Purkinje fibers okay, that spread throughout the walls of the ventricles. When the impulse spread throughout the walls of the ventricles, QRS wave is produced. So a few seconds after the QRS wave begins, the ventricles contract. So the interval between P and Q is the period where the transmission of impulse is delayed at the AV node and the impulse is then transmitted to the apex of the heart before it spreads throughout the wall of the ventricles. Abnormal ECG is a sign of an unhealthy heart or irregular cardiac rhythm. This shows a bradycardia ECG. Bradycardia is the condition where the individual has a resting heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. In bradycardia ECG, the distance between the RR interval is longer compared to the distance between the RR interval in normal ECG that shows a normal heartbeat. Bradycardia ECG is produced when the SA node fails to, to discharge the electrical impulses or the SA node discharge the electrical impulses slower than normal. Another reason is because of the impulses are not transmitted from the atria to the ventricles. When bradycardia happens, where the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, the heart is not able to pump enough blood, and this leads to heart failure. The next diagram shows tachycardia ECG. Tachycardia is the condition where the individual has a heart rate more than 100 beats per minute. If we examine the RR interval in tachycardia ECG, the distance between the RR interval is shorter compared to the distance between RR interval in normal ECG that shows normal heartbeat. Tachycardia ECG is produced when the electrical impulses are discharged by the SA node faster than usual. It can also happen when the electrical impulses in atria and ventricles spread abnormally. So this can cause inefficient contractions of atria and ventricles.
which will then disturb the impulses from the SA node. Tachycardia can cause blood clots that results in stroke and also heart failure. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped by each ventricle in one minute. It can be calculated by multiplying the stroke volume by the heart rate. Stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped by each ventricle in one heartbeat, that is in a single contraction. Average stroke volume is 70 milliliter per beat. While heart rate is the number of heartbeats per minute, so in one minute, average heart rate is 72 beats. So, the average volume of blood pumped by each ventricle in one minute is about 5 litre per minute. When stroke volume increases, cardiac output will also increase. Stroke volume depends on venous return. Venous return is the amount of blood returning to the heart via veins. So, for example, during exercise, the skeletal muscles contract and need more oxygen. Skeletal muscles contraction increases venous return and this will increase stroke volume. And the result is increase in cardiac output because the heart will pump even more blood to supply oxygen to the muscles. There are many factors that affect heart rate. The factors are sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves, hormones, and physical factors. These are all extrinsic factors influenced from the outside that affect the heart rate. Heart rate increases during stressful situations, for example, missing the deadline to submit report. Sympathetic nerves speed up the SA node that will increase the heart rate and increase and also increase the strength of contraction of the heart. On the other hand, when the body is relaxed, parasympathetic nerves slow down the SA node and this decreases the heart rate and conserves energy. The second factor is hormones. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are released by the adrenal medulla and thyroxine, T4, it is released by the thyroid gland. These hormones are released during physical and emotional stress situation such as working under dangerous conditions. The release of these hormones increases the heart rate. Next is physical factors. For example, when having fever, our body temperature increases. An increase in body temperature by 1 degree Celsius raises the heart rate by 10 beats per minute. The second physical factor is age. Older people have slower heart rate than younger people. This is because of slower electrical activity in the SA node. That might happen because of wear and tear on the electrical system of the heart. The next physical factor is gender. Female has faster heart rate than male. And this is because the female heart is typically smaller than male. So the heart, the female heart needs to be faster. And the last physical factor is exercise. During exercise, muscle cells need more oxygen. So the heart will beat even faster to supply oxygen to the muscle cells.